season is here, but this year and this quarter, it's a little different than what we've seen in the past. I know many of you see my initial video for the earnings season. It's always the banks, right? Because JP Morgan now kicks it off. But I know most of you ignore those videos <laughs> and you don't really care about the banks. You're like, eh, Tracy, that's boring. But this quarter, I'm thinking it might not be so boring. So what are the earnings charts looking like? I've brought you the big four, the too big to fail, plus one of the regional banks that's going to be the first regional bank that reports. So that's going to be important. It's not one of the ones on the West Coast, however. Those are still to come, but it is one of the big regionals. So what do their charts look like right now? What does their earnings surprise track records look like? Does that even matter? Because to be honest, these conference calls are going to be where it's at. But we need to take a look and see who has uh, some of the best charts for the banks. Are they just oversold here? Some of these in the too big to fail category looking kind of cheap, but let's dive right in and see what these charts look like. So we are going to start with JP Morgan as they usually lead it off. However, this quarter we have three big, uh, too big to fail banks all reporting on the same day on Friday. Uh, April 14th. So, um, you know, they're all going at the same time. So pick which one, which conference call you're going to be listening in on. But this one with Jamie Dimon, you know, the CEO leading the way, a lot of people going to be tuning in to, to hear some wisdom from him. So his conference call is probably going to be among the most important on uh, this start of earnings season. And as you can see, JP Morgan has a pretty good earnings surprise track record. They always have. They did have those two misses there in 2022, which is a little bit out of flavor for them, but they beat the last two quarters. But again, nobody really cares, right? You can see the shares have come down in the banking crisis there. We have pulled back, but they're still not that cheap. They're not even as cheap as last October or September lows. So, uh, you know, these big, the too big to fail banks aren't quite the same as some of the regionals and even some of the community banks. Those have a little bit more volatility and wilder charts because obviously these are too big to fail. So people are getting into them for safety purposes. The shares are still pretty cheap here, but we'll, We'll listen in and see what they have to say. Remember that these really big mega banks have more than just mortgages, just basic lending. They have investment banking, trading, other things that they make money off of. But those other things are looking kind of good here with some of the chaos that's going on in the traditional banking services. So JP Morgan Chase is the one everybody's going to be watching this week. Then we're going to switch it over to the big international bank, Citigroup. It's got that great earnings surprise track record. It finally missed last quarter. Um, but, you know, that's a small miss, as you can see with the small little red arrow. So I'm not too concerned about that. Now, before the banking crisis, Citigroup was one of the banks that people were worried the most about because it does have a big international business. And everybody was thinking, oh, you know, that's not the place you want to be right now. But with the with the banking crisis, maybe it is now. It does provide a little more diversity outside of the U.S. And they they do get revenue from other places versus all the other banks I'm talking about today. So these shares too haven't really pulled back all that much. They they have weakened, so they are a little more attractive here. They, this is the cheapest of the two big to fail banks on a PE basis and on a price to book basis. And they also pay the highest dividend yielding about 4.4% right now. Then let's look at Bank of America. They don't report until next week. So we're going to have some of the other banks report and then we'll hear from Bank of America. But it too has a good earnings surprise track record. Just the three misses there uh, in the last five years, including one last year. But it's back on track with two beats in a row. These shares have fallen a bit more than some of the others down well over 20% here in 2023 and hitting this new multi-year low. But it's kind of hanging out right there around $27, $28. Is this the floor for it or will we see it go even lower here? It's unclear. 
Um, Bank of America does have uh, a big deposit base. People are watching that. And it's a little less diversified than a few of the others, which I think is why people are uh, jumping out. But it could be oversold. We won't know again until they report as well. But that's coming next week. Then I'm going to switch it over to the big regional bank that I talked about. That is the first one to kick it off. PNC Financial Services out of Pittsburgh. They're one of the biggest of the regional banks. You know, we're talking 40, 50 billion market cap here. A lot of the other regional banks, surprisingly, uh, if you actually dig down deep and look at your regional bank, have market caps, you know, three, four, five billion. That's still pretty big for a bank but it's not in the same level as PNC Financial Services. And the financial services really tips you off to what they do. So a lot of investment type of products that they offer, as well as the traditional mortgages, you know, lending, all of that. You can see the shares have, uh, you know, sold off here on the banking crisis. But is this one overdone? They have a good track record of beating, although last quarter they did miss as well, just like Citigroup. But they are, you know, pretty steady eddy over the last uh, five years. So I'm not too worried about that. It's what they're going to say is happening to the actual deposits. Are our customers taking out money to put it somewhere else, either into money markets or into a too big to fail banks? What is happening behind the scenes? We will find out on Friday. Then we're going to wrap it up with uh, the last too big to fail bank, Wells Fargo. This one's kind of overlooked because people have always associated it with being a mortgage, uh, the big mortgage lender, but they've really cut back on that business now. And they've done layoffs. They did layoffs last year of a lot of their mortgage brokers as the housing market has slowed. And so they're trying to get into some other areas of revenue. But you can see the big sell-off there with these shares as well um, here in 2023. But again, they have put in a pretty good earnings surprise track record since uh, the pandemic hit. They had a couple big misses right away when the pandemic hit, but they've really turned it around and only had that one miss last year during these pandemic years. So is, is this a sale on Wells Fargo? It's always been kind of overlooked over the last couple of years. Um, had the big rally in 2021, but now we're seeing it break down a bit here. Uh, this is one that probably will be the third in line when people are listening on Friday. So they'll start with JP Morgan. They might switch over to Citigroup first, then check out PNC Financial. I guess let's put them in the fourth place. Then it'll be Wells Fargo. But sometimes with these ones that no one's paying attention to is where you can find the bargains. So keep an eye out there for some uh, you know, overselling in some of these banks. But Wells Fargo, one to watch this week on the bank side. So you can see from these earnings charts that all these banks have very good earnings surprise track records, at least since the pandemic has hit, and some like Citigroup over the last five years. But who cares about that right now, right? Because there's other factors in play here um, because you know Silicon Valley Bank no longer here, uh, the New York Bank no longer here, at least um, as publicly traded, banks, you know, uh, we have FDIC kind of hanging around out there in the background, but thankfully we haven't seen any other bank collapse since those two banks. And so have things stabilized. What is happening? This is a key quarter for the banks. They're kicking it off for good or bad. And more banks will be next week, like with Bank of America, but other big regional banks that are going to be important earnings reports as well next week. Then we're going to get the FANGs, FANG stocks coming pretty quickly right after. So there's a lot going on. I'm going to be bringing you all of these earnings charts as well as tweeting out what's happening on the conference calls with a lot of these companies. So follow me on Twitter at, at Tracy Reinick. It's just at my name. Um, I'll have some Twitter streams going. I'll have more charts than just the ones that are in these videos. But we've got all of earnings season covered here at Zaxx. We're the earnings headquarters. Join us. Go to Zaxx.com. Click on the earnings page. Read Shiraz's 
earnings updates uh, once or twice a week. He's putting out those articles talking about what's happening with all of the earnings um, during earnings season. So you don't want to miss those, but be sure to get us somewhere. Get us on YouTube for all these videos. You can go to zax.com slash YouTube to get us here on these earnings all-star charts. But as I said, I'm going to be bringing you all of this action, all earnings season long. And for the first time, the banks are actually interesting. Who knew? But they are this earnings season. So I'm going to be covering a lot of them. And so you want to be sure to tune in. And I'll see you again next week with some more bank charts and probably the fangs.